All right, then welcome back everyone. That's all this question three indices. I hope you read the question once, but I'll still read it. We are given a permutation, our good old permutation, right? What's the permutation? It's simply an array of length n which contains integers from one to n exactly once. That's what the permutation is. We want to find out this uh, three indices i, j, and k such that this a j is greater than a i and a j is greater than a k, but uh, this i is less than j and this j is less than k. That's what they have given, right? You have to find out this three indices i less than j and j is less than k, but a j is greater than a i and a j is greater than a k. Of course, uh, equals to cannot come here because you have a permutation, it only has distinct elements. So you want to find out uh, sort of this, you want to find out such kind of stuff in your uh, permutation such that this is a of i, this is uh, a of k and this is a of j. So a of j should be greater than some element before it and a of j should be greater than some element after it. If you are able to find it, if you are able to find it, then I return with these three indices, i, j and k, right? So that's what you have to return. So if you are able to find this j so that it is greater than some element before it and some element after it, let's return these three indices. Otherwise print no if it is not possible. Fine. So the question is simple. Uh, there are many ways to solving this question and uh, the constraints, uh, I guess, are uh, pretty less if I'm say, I guess it's uh, the constraints are what? 2 into uh, 10 power 4. Okay. 2 into 10 power 4. So there are various ways of solving this question. Uh, I'll show you the approaches. Okay. So how do you approach the question and then I'll show you the most optimal solution as well. The question is simple, right? The question is clear. We just want to find out uh, this aj which is greater than ai and ak. So me writing like this uh, clearly says that ai comes before and ak comes after. So I am looking after such pair and if such a triplet basically, if such triplet exists, just return me ij and k. If it doesn't exist, then return me no. So there can be many options. Uh, what you can do is you can uh, start from every possible value of j. So you know if you have a permutation, the permutation of length n, the elements uh, will be from elements uh, like permutation, right? So your arrays of size n. So you can possibly try every possible value of j. You can go from j equals to 2 till n minus 1. And in that, what you can check is, you can check for i equals to 1 till j, not including j. And uh, check if you are able to find some element less than j. And then you can check for uh, k equals to j plus 1 till n and check whether some element is less than j or not. If you are able to find it, simply return i, j and k. Simply return i, j and k and your job will be done. And what is the time complexity of this loop? So this time complexity will be what? This will be n and this will also be n. So this is the order of uh, n square solution. So this is not ideal, right? So this will give you a TLE. So order of n square solution is not approachable, right? So this is, this is like, a, like a pure brute force, right? You're trying every possible value of j and for every possible value of j, you're going like, so in this array, you're trying every possible value of j. And for each value of j, you are searching the entire array before it and searching the entire array after it uh, to check whether i and k is existing or not, right? So you're not using any property that this uh, array is a permutation. You're just uh, simply doing brute force. So this is fine, this order of n square solution, this can come to your mind if you're a beginner. What next? Uh, order of n square solution is good, but uh, we want to do better. We want to do better. Can we exploit some other property here? So can we exploit some other property? Uh, okay, uh, there's one more approach that should come to your mind. Uh, like it depends, right? Uh, how well how well have you known about pre-computation and all? So another approach can be, since you know you are doing a repetitive work, right? What you are doing is you are after, a, you are actually finding minimum element in this uh, left part. You are finding minimum element in right sub part, right? So you are doing some sort of repetition here. So it pays well uh, to use uh, this prefix min here and a suffix min arrays here, right? Since you know this loop it is doing, it is for a given value of j, it is finding out the minimum value in this part, right? And the second loop is finding the minimum value in this part. Since this is a repetitive task, what you can do is you can maintain a prefix min and suffix min arrays to do your job, right? That you can do. You can uh, delegate this task to a prefix min array and you can delegate this task to a suffix min array. And then in order of one only, you will be able to figure out. In just order of one time, you'll be able to figure out uh, whether this index is existing or not. So now your time complexity will be order of n, right? You have because delegated the task to prefix uh, and suffix arrays, but the space complexity has become order of n. And this solution works. This will be accepted, right? So maybe during coding, I'll also show you the solution for uh, prefix m as well. So it is simple, right, guys? You delegate this task of loop to prefix arrays and suffix arrays, and your job will be done. If for a given value of j, if if for a given value of j, if for a given value of j, you are able to find an element. You are, you are able to find an element smaller than that, smaller than j here, smaller than j here and an element smaller than j in this part, then the job is done, right? You just need to maintain what is the minimum element till this index. Okay, maybe <laughs> you just have to maintain, if for a given value of j, you just have to maintain what is the minimum value of, uh, what is the minimum of all of these and what is the minimum of all of these, right? Just by looking at these two values, you can figure out whether this index exists or not, right? So that you can do. So that's one solution. What next? Can you do even better? So we started from a uh, order of n square, right? Then we figured out, okay, these loops can be optimized. Then we went to order of n. However, with the order of n space as well, right? We now, we are requiring an order of n space for a prefix min and suffix min arrays. Okay, what next? Can you do even better? 
time wise i don't think we can do any better here because uh, we still have an array of distinct elements which, is, which can be unsorted so time wise from n like the next best would be log n so you cannot do it but can we reduce the space it uh, maybe maybe not so it actually depends uh, on the nature of our array how is our array so look at our array how is our array our array is a permutation right so what is the permutation what is the permutation it has elements from 1 to n exactly once so maybe let's say a permutation of size 5 so it has elements from 1 to 5 exactly once so what does it say like only distinct elements are there right only distinct elements are there so i don't know about how the elements are organized but uh, since the elements are distinct we can ha have the elements organized like this maybe the first element is here the second element is here the third element is here so this means the second element is greater than the first element third element is smaller than both of them or uh, maybe something like this maybe something like this or we can have a strictly increasing array as well right or maybe we can have something like this so in the end what i'm saying is uh, either all elements can be like this increasing all elements can be decreasing or there can be some sort of this jumbling happening because all the array elements are distinct so what does it say what does it say if such three indices need to exist such that uh, aj is greater than aj is greater than some element before it ai and some element after it so i'll show an example see your array can be something like this as well right so what i'm saying is if there is some increasing part definitely there will be some increasing part uh, decreasing part so if such indices have to exist such that ai is less than aj is greater than ak since the array elements are distinct you will like maybe increase till some part and you will have to start decreasing at some point you will have to start decreasing at some point if such thing exists if such thing doesn't exist then you will always have something like this you will always have something like this or you will always have something like this the elements will either always be decreasing or elements will always be increasing if this is not the case since the array elements are distinct the element can increase decrease increase decrease increase decrease but what i'm saying is you will always be able to find a point you will always be able to find a point such that it is greater than the element before it and it is less than the element after it it comes from the two facts what are the two facts elements are distinct elements are distinct since the elements are distinct definitely either you can have this zigzag 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 or maybe just increasing or just decreasing if it is just increasing or just decreasing of course you cannot find it but if it is if it is not just increasing and decreasing you will definitely be able to find an element such that it is greater than element before it and greater than element after it right you will be able to find it so what it says is it just suffices to check consecutive triplets right so you can just start from 4 j equals to 2 till uh, what is the last one 2 till n minus 1 right so a1 a2 a3 a4 you can just uh, check this triplet you can check you can check this triplet or uh, yeah that's that right so there or maybe let's say you had a5 you can check this triplet so a2 a3 a4 right so start from here start from here check this triplet then go ahead check this triplet then go ahead check this triplet so it suffices to check consecutive triplets that's what it means it comes on the fact the elements are distinct right so just check just check here two things so you can just check here if uh, array of j is greater than array of j minus 1 and array of j is greater than array of j plus 1 you got your answer yes it is possible and you can print uh, you can print j minus 1 j and j plus 1 right if entire loop has run and you still not got your answer you can print no fine and that's that right so the question is clear now in the coding part it will be interesting uh, i'll show you both the approaches the suffix uh, min and prefix min approaches and this as well okay so i'll repeat the logic again once during coding so let's just code it up okay guys uh, let's quickly code it up so first let's uh, code up the order of n solution only uh, order of n time and order of n space so what does that we just simply go through the consecutive triplets and figure out uh, and check whether uh, ai is greater than ai minus 1 and ai is uh, greater than ai plus 1 right because if you know if such a if such index need to exist and definitely a mountain like structure would be formed so you will definitely have an element which is less than uh, which is greater than both of its neighbors right that's that's fine that directly follows from the fact that we will have distinct elements in a permutation fine so i've taken the permutation here i've taken deliberately as one based indexing it just uh, becomes easier easier mental model so i have to go through j equals to 2 j less than equals to j less than equals to n minus 1 right so i have to check all the triplets basically j plus plus if array of j is greater than array of j minus 1 and and array of j is greater than array of j plus 1 if such index exists definitely this guy there will be a point uh, there will be an element which will be greater than both of its neighbors right if this exists this is your answer basically you have to first print yes followed by a new line and then you have to print the indices i j and k so will be i i will be j minus one i will be j minus one followed by j followed by what will be k k will be of course j plus one right and followed by a new line and now i can probably return out of this so i'll just this test case is complete if after entire loop is exited we have considered all the triplets and we are still not able to find out we can simply 
print no no it's not possible okay so the cases here are not much of issue yes no like this okay so let me just quickly run it so what i done is simple right we have just gone through all the triplets from z equals to z equals to 10 minus 1 i'm considering all the triplets and if i found out an element which is greater than both of its neighbor which is greater than both of its neighbor then yes i found out uh, the three indices i j and k i is a minus 1 j is j and k is simply j plus 1 if after going to all the triplets i'm not able to find it and i'll simply print no I'll just quickly run it yes yes and uh, no yeah this seems to be working let me just quickly submit it it works uh, if you want you can watch the video from now on i'll just discuss the prefix uh, how can you use prefix min suffix min array just for your understanding however this was the most optimal solution but let's uh, just see uh, let's just discuss the prefix min and suffix min approach as well that is also interesting all right so instead of wasting your time the code is actually very simple but it will just take too much time for me to write it down so i'll just explain it to you here only so here i've taken the input no issue still one based indexing by see whenever you have this prefix sum or suffix sum or prefix min whenever you're doing pre computation always prefer using one based arrays it will uh, relieve a lot of thing it will help you handle the edge cases very easily right so what we need is we need prefix min and suffix min arrays and at every index at every index what i'm going to check is whether the smallest element whether the smallest element before me so i'll go through every element let's say 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 6 if i'm checking this element right now a3 i'm checking a3 then i'll check whether the minimum element till this part whether the minimum element till this part till this part is less than me and whether the minimum element till this part till this part suffix basically minimum of all 4 5 6 till this part is it smaller than me if i'm able to find it i'm just simply going to return the indices now observe one thing here in prefix min and suffix min arrays what i've stored is i've stored the indices i've stored the indices where of i is less than area of prefix min of i minus i'm storing the indices if i'm storing the indices because in the end i have to print the indices right i don't want the answers right So here, if you observe here, prefix min of uh, one is one. Of course, the smallest element, the smallest element till the first index, smallest element first index uh, lies at the first index only, right? And I'm going to go through all the all the array elements. If uh, area of i is less than, if area of i is less than smallest element before it, smallest element before it, I'm going to update it. I'm going to update it. Otherwise, uh, the smallest element continues. It goes on. Similarly, I've created the suffix min arrays. I just have to come from n minus one till one and uh, update the suffix min here, right? And I'm still going to consider all the all the triplets here. So I'm gonna go through. From, I'm gonna go from j equals to two to n minus one. Every possible value of j basically, and check whether a of j is greater than a of j is greater than minimum element till this part, and a of j is greater than minimum element till this part. Then definitely you can be sure that some i and k is existing such that j is greater than i, j is less than k, but a j is greater than a i and a j is greater than a k. Right. So this is what it is. So the code might look verbose, but the the why it is looking verbose is because I'm storing the indices here. Okay, that's the only reason. So this was one good way. So this you could have also approach if you are a beginner. This also a solution that you can come up with, and it will work perfectly fine. Okay, this will work fine. So yeah, that's that for this video. Uh, let me know if you are confused somewhere. I'll be happy to help. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.